I'm Stefano anyway. And I'm Alicia Frosi. And um, right, so we are talking about Satan, but that's not the thing you eat. Um, we are actually talking about a lot of uh, privileged operations in the sense of uh, systems call, system calls mostly, um, sec comp, containers, um, moment, virtual machines. Um, some problems about them, or what we think there are, is, is a problem in terms of security and the solution we propose. Um, after that, there will be a demo, and then questions, and don't overestimate us, but we hope to answer to your satisfaction. Um, so, quick recall, or what do we understand as a system call? Um, so, in essentially every modern operating system, you have several rings, right? So, you have a kernel ring, you have a use space ring, uh, that might be ring one or ring four, or uh, in any case, you have something like a system call abstraction. Um, in case of Linux, it's simply that you have a process uh, requesting resources or services from, from the kernel. And this is, you know, maybe perhaps the, the, the main security model that an uh, operating system implements. So, depending on your user or capabilities on Linux or context on Linux and BSDs, um, you might get that this request is granted or denied. So if you ever try to insert the famous module uh, that's called evil things uh, as a user, um, the kernel will not let you do it. Uh, however, if you touch your own files, uh, then the system call will succeed. And the difference is just that, well, the number of the syscall uh, is different, and uh, root could do this, and root could also do that. OK, that's, that's kind of obvious, but um, useful maybe to uh, introduce what we want to improve. So uh, quite often, we see in container environments and virtualization engines or mixes thereof, uh, such as, let's say, uh, Kubevirt or Kata containers, for example, to, uh, but even if you just stick to Podman and, and Docker. Um, let's say the container wants to create a, a network interface. That's usually a ton. It's uh, like the most basic tunnel interface on, on Linux. And you need to do it the old way. So without Netlink, uh, you have a IO control and you want to, um, yeah, right tell the, the operating system, I want to create a network interface. And on Linux, this doesn't need root anymore, but it, it needs capnet admin, which means you can do pretty much whatever you want. And you can create how many interfaces as you want, uh, spoof the traffic, bring down the networking. Um, so there are a few other examples. Um, of, of these things that are, are actually quite common, like, for example, setting up the priority for a real-time virtual machine um, where you just need to affect the priority of one process, not all of them. Um, there are other, other, other problems right now. So, um, for example, you want to create a device node as a user. Um, you want maybe to connect to a specific uh, daemon or open a specific file. And all of them, there have been impressive uh, improvements uh, recently in Linux, but wouldn't it be nice if it could just say, okay, I want that this process can create this uh, top device. And sure, Linux security modules do something almost like that, but um, those are kind of fixed policies. Um, they're, they're not so easy to, to dynamically dynamically configure them per process. Um, so let's, we, we started looking into it, and of course, BPF uh, inside comp is, is an important part of the story. Um, you can do sec comp with uh, a small BPF program uh, where you say that you might want to deny or, or accept a syscall based on its number. Not good enough because that's still too generic. 
uh, big improvement again uh, in Linux recently. Uh, you can tell another is a space process details about your syscall. Uh, this is called um, SecComp Notify, and essentially, yeah, the kernel tells you a lot of a lot of things, arguments. Transition time. Um, so, um, container already use uh, make use of second. Um, usually, um, you define you have a JSON file that defines the syscall that are allowed, denied, or notifiable by the container. So, usually, the runtime take the um, second profile that is part of the OCI spec, and basically, it use uh, libsecond library in order to use uh, to generate the BPF filter, as we saw from what Stefano just described. If you have filter is needed for filter the syscalls. Um, in OCI, we also have support for second notifiers. Um, and basically, uh, the runtime need to communicate with the monitoring process through Unisocket. So basically, this is the OCI extensions. So through this Unix socket, it tells the file descriptor where uh, the monitor will receive these notification events. And when this uh, starting phase is done, then the monitoring process is able to monitor the container and take action if one of the filter syscall is uh, executed by the containerized workload. So there are already existing solutions um, that take advantage of second notifiers, like for example, LXD, or there is a King, King Wolf second pageant. However, uh, those projects have in common that they uh, implement an handler per syscall. So, for example, if you want to add a new syscall, so maybe even changing the behavior, you need to code it yourself. So it's not very easy to reuse. Um, in, so in, in order to do that, of course, you need to have a deep understanding how second notifier works. And this is the place where uh, Satan come to play. So the idea is that as if you are an admin or you are developing a tool, you will be able to describe this into a recipe. So basically you will have a match. So basically this describes the syscall that you want to filter on arguments and you will associate an action on it. Um, so basically this will be, we choose to use a JSON format, and uh, the Satan cooker is basically taking this as an input file and generate the BPF program, and then a bytecode representation of matches and action. Uh, we need a kind of launcher that installs the BPF filter in order, and then launch the real process that we want to monitor, and this is the goal of Satan Eater. So the uh, actual monitor is what we call Satan. So basically this take uh, gluten, that's the bytecode representation for matches and action, monitor the notifiers, and then basically perform the action in behalf of your target. So here you have a, visible, a visual um, representation of the flow. So uh, we have two distinct phases. We have the generation of inputs that can be a, on a completely different building system. So it doesn't need to be uh, like we saw in the container runtime uh, when we start the container. So Cooker will um, read uh, the recipe that you wrote, will generate gluten that will be the input for Satan, and the BPF filter that will be launched by the eater. So when the eater uh, launched the target, then basically Satan can start monitoring um, the um, target process. So why Satan? So we uh, decide to um, choose a declarative approach versus an imperative. So this gives you uh, a better visibility of your, uh, of your uh, operation, so the privilege operation. Mm, it's uh, flexible, so you don't need to code an extra handler if you, if you want another behavior. This, it's entire, um, 
the Satan setup will, will take care of that. So what you need to do is just writing the JSON recipe. Uh, it's a generic, so it's an independent and self-contained tool. We are not relying on libseccomp. Uh, we are going to see that in details, but basically this setup generates uh, the BPF program and uh, the uh, re um, matches and the action that we saw. So here you have a visual representation of a code. It's a snippet from uh, QWERT, but you could solve it uh, with uh, the JSON recipe. So this actually it's a nice representation what we mean declarative versus imperative. So of course security is one of the strongest and large use case that we have and so about for Satan. Uh, rootless container, so we want to target root, rootless container by reducing the number of capability um, given to them by impersonating only the necessary syscalls. Uh, a nice thing with SACCOMP is that you can have a deep argument in, in prospection. So for example, you can uh, check also complex objects such as, for example, strings, structs, and buffers. Uh, a new, um, a nice add-on that we think could be beneficial is also counting the number of the Cisco execution. So again, this gives you a um, more fine grade control of what your process is doing. Uh, however, security is not the only use case. We think also could be used in other contexts, like for example, testing. So for example, you could inject some error if uh, you execute a certain syscall. So for example, you want to simulate how your application behaves on different, on different error. Um, you can also mock a syscall, so not execute on your system, that particular system, or maybe another thing could be injecting some delays or simply asleep and then continuing the, the, um, the Cisco. Um, we have a deep introspection of arguments, so that could be used for uh, profiling your application. So for example, it could be an alternative uh, to a uh, tracing tool that uses uh, ptrace today. Um, we already mentioned, for example, uh, could be also used for managing the resource allocation. Like, for example, um, second allow you to inject file descriptor into the target process. So this could be an alternative way to SCM writes or the use of PDF ticket FT. Or maybe you could, a use case of tick could be to connect maybe to a uh, container, two applications that runs into the container that don't have the buy mount, so the socket is not available uh, uh, to the both containers, so SATA could take the file descriptor of both applications and connect to them. So those are just some examples. Uh, here, finally, you can see an example of the JSON uh, that we were mentioning. So you can see that there are two sections. The first is the match, so in this case, we uh, filter a make node with major number one and a subset of minor. So basically we are going to do a privilege operation, so the call only for certain uh, type of argument. And uh, the action that will be performed is basically redoing the make node in the context of the target. So you can see context mount caller. Um, the second example is what I was explaining to you about testing. So in this case, we have a match with on connect on two different paths. So you can see test one sock and test two sock. So if your application try to connect on test one, um, we'll basically simulate the uh, syscall because we return uh, zero. And in the second case, we are returning an error with this minus one. So these are just some JSON example that you could uh, describe with, with Satan. So now more technical things. OK, sorry for the transition. <laughs> um, right. Um, so right, um, the cooker generates two parts, right? We say uh, there is a BPF program, because we need to tell the kernel, please tell us about um, 
a number of syscalls, not all of them, otherwise we would have a few problems. I mean, that wouldn't be really useful if we just got all the calls, like IO calls, like read, write, or send message, or networking calls in general. Um, so we need to be selective. We just uh, want to um, get what we are interested in, and this is uh, the role of the BPF in the kernel. Um, so great, um, this is nothing new, no? you see a binary search tree, that's what a libsac comp implements. Um, why do I have a binary search tree? Because, uh, well, I have a list of syscalls, uh, and maybe, maybe they are a bit more than seven, uh, maybe they are 200, and then every time BPF needs to check if it's a matching number, well, it's a comparison. So. Uh, we want to keep, a, this is, it's actually quite relevant to um, keep a average um, complexity for, for the search operation to something reasonable. Okay, great. For that we have uh, big off log n, but there is something that makes libsec comp uh, job a bit simpler than uh, what, what Satan does, because libsec comp is used typically to just uh, deny or accept syscalls. Uh, however, we need to be a bit more detailed and we need to do like, yeah, accept, deny, or notify. So we have two optimization goals. Um, and one thing that we found to be quite effective in our solution is to fill um, those, those, uh, the, the, the bottommost level, the leaves, with some intermediate, um, more jumps like there are redundant jumps to these possible actions that are, sure, here we just show the user notification or let the process do it as if nothing happened or um, block it. Um, then, yeah. Um, right, and, and this brings me to, to what's the overhead, you might wonder. Um, we haven't been really scientific yet because, uh, yeah, that, that would need a bit more time. But essentially, what we did is uh, to try and run 10 million LSIC on a postmodern 10 um, ish years old something laptop. Um, and, well, the, the Linux got quite fast, or maybe CPUs got quite fast, or something got really fast, I don't know, but it just takes seven seconds. Okay, so we tried a typical uh, usage of BPF that we see with Satan, with filters that might make sense for typical Podman containers that need to just mount a volume. Uh, so it's uh, 100 instructions that do essentially nothing, plus we have some comparison, and then we jump across this filter. Um, and that takes uh, a bit longer, 8.2 seconds. Uh, but from there, we estimated uh, that every comparison is something between 20 and, and 40 clock per instruction. Again, there, um, there might be something better on the market now. So I guess we don't care, uh, or we do, but, but this should show that, that what we are doing is, is actually doable. Um, now, we were talking about the BPF, and this is the other part. So this is the part that is adjusted. Yeah, sorry, for, pun not intended, actually. Um, consumed, same, um, by the, the user space monitor. Um, so um, the user space monitor gets notifications, and now it needs to decide what, it needs to, decide what to do with it. Um, so this is, yeah, pretty generic. Uh, I'm sorry how obvious, about how obvious this is, but we have an area of instructions, an area which is read-only with the constants that you put in the JSON. We have a temporary area. Uh, that's the only read-write part. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. And we have a, a, a structure that's really simple. That's what SACCOMP gives us, uh, which is a list of the arguments plus the PID of the target. Um, and looking into instructions, we try to keep them to a minimum, and we are, of course, concerned about feature creep, um, but, but yeah, we are quite committed to, to not add more than this, because otherwise, what we are doing is 
we will not really be able to claim it's secure and it will not actually be secure. So um, the options are, well, uh, the obvious one, okay, check that the syscall number is matching what I wrote in the configuration. Um, a couple of them are specific to seccomp. So um, seccomp allows us to inject a file descriptor atomically, so atomically with a call, meaning that the task cannot do anything else. Um, meanwhile, and it is useful if you, well, you see it later in the demo, but you can connect uh, to something and the supervisor connects you to something else and replaces the file descriptor. And this is actually safe to do. Um, we can return an error or uh, success, and then we need to shuffle a bit the data around because yeah, the configuration comes from JSON and the process can pass whatever in it. Um, and a quick mention about the context. So by context, we generally mean namespaces on Linux. Um, we also enable specifying the namespace, the several types of namespaces where we want to execute a syscall. So when we impersonate the syscall, we want to, to be able to, uh, for example, yeah, for a container to do that in its mount namespace. Um, and plus, yeah, obvious boring things such as a working directory, UID, GID. Um, tags, so in this JSON recipe, of course, uh, we need to have references between um, matches and actions because we might want to recycle some data. Um, security, how bad is security with this? So it looks like we kind of explained to your rootkit so far. Um, but that's not our intention. And actually, what turns out from uh, a bit of experience we had with, with um, yeah, several yeah, container engines or, or virtualization, um, no virtualization in the sense of a VM, because yeah, in that case, you, know, you have a much, much stronger isolation, and you wouldn't need to use this at all, probably. But um, let's say you have something in between, or a mix. Um, and yeah, sometimes you need to, I mean, it, we, we look at it and we think, okay, yeah, actually, I didn't want to, to tell a component that an RPC needs to pass a, a path about a file that I want to open. What you need to do is to open the file, and maybe there is actually a way. Um, so the, the obvious benefit of this is, um, yeah, that instead of uh, implementing several types of RPCs that, that we, we, we saw in, in several projects, um, you can have a unified mechanism. And unified both in the sense that this should be generic enough to be used by different projects, and also that for the same container or the same engine, uh, you can have a single place where you just say, okay, those are my set of privileged operations and nothing else. Um, we don't want to do the parsing in the supervisors, of course. Uh, right now it's 500 lines of code and we really, really, really hope to keep it that way. Um, there is a surface, definitely. There is a significant um, uh, attack surface. And uh, in that link, um, we listed a few considerations about those. But overall, um, we think it's not perfect. It doesn't guarantee security by itself. It's not magic, but we think there are there is some uh, clear value in this solution. Okay, so now we have a live demo. Uh, we have a website where you can find also all those demos. So if something goes wrong, please go there. <laughs> um, Okay, so we have seen some uh, example. Now we can see Satan setup in action. So first of all, I would like to uh, show you what we are going to execute. So this is similar to uh, the example I listed in the slide. Um, so there are different matches. In the first one, we are going to try to connect uh, to a different path. So you can see that in the match, we have a cool sock. And we're going to try to modify the connect and try to connect to the demo sock. So different paths, different uh, 
server and in the second match we're going to um, inject some error, uh, permission denied when we execute the connect and then the third one is to execute the rest of the connect. So uh, first of all we need to uh, generate the input file. Um, so this is done by Cooker uh, that it takes as, uh, um, as input the recipe. Then we need to generate uh, the uh, gluten that's uh, the input for Satan and the BPF filter. Okay, so some prints, uh, but we have generated this, the file. So um, what we would like to do is just to print some, to, to read some, some file and print it in the server. So I'm just generating um, a, st a, a, a file that will be read and then we can start the socket uh, as a listening server. And this will be uh, the path where we want to actually connect to it. Okay, for and then um, we need Sataniter in order to run, um, launch our application. And this takes uh, as input uh, uh, the BPF filter. And uh, our application, it's again socket that is going to open the file that I wrote previously. And we want to connect uh, to uh, the cool socket. So actually we don't have this school socket, but we try to connect to the uh, server down. So um, Satan Eater is blocking because it's waiting. There is some synchronization because we need to start Satan, otherwise we might need to, might uh, lose some, some, some Cisco. So Satan takes as input uh, the other file that we, uh, um, create before, that's the gluten, and it takes uh, the PID of the eater. Okay, I hope I haven't missed time. Okay, uh, of course I did something wrong. You see what I did wrong? Uh, Okay, let's try again. Live debugging is always. Okay, we didn't start the other socket, so let's do it again. <laughs> I mean, it's live, so that's it. Okay, so now you can see that the, this has finished and we have printed uh, the string. Okay, the second part of the demo, uh, okay, here, yes. um, we are going to try to execute the same uh, uh, command, but on a different path. So the different path, on this path, we are going to inject an error. So Satan is always the same. It takes the same gluten files. And I you can see that we have uh, uh, got the permission denied. So this can be a, a nice way how you can test on different, uh, different behavior for your application. Uh, of course, if you are going to do uh, another path, in our case, we don't have uh, this socket. This uh, connect is not filtered and it will be simply continued. In this case, it fails because we don't have it. So those are the three matches that we had in the JSON. Okay, so this is the first uh, demo. Uh, the second one, we are going to um, use Podman and try to create uh, a character device. So here you can see that in the match we have make nodes, uh, major one, and a subset of, uh, of, uh, of minor. And as a call, we are going to uh, replicate the make node uh, in the context of the caller. Okay, so First of all, I want just to show you what happens if we don't use uh, um, if we don't use uh, Satan. So in this case, I'm just trying uh, to I drop all the capability here. So I'm not going to have cap make node inside the container. It's a Fedora. It's try just to create make node dev lol with some some. Um, 
So yeah, I got the permission denied because the container doesn't have the capability. So now uh, we can try to do, um, to start Satan. Uh, So it takes in this, it's a, a slightly uh, different uh, flavor of, uh, I haven't generated, uh, sorry. So first of all, of course, we need to generate the input file, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, again, this takes uh, the, the uh, JSON file I showed you previously. Again, it creates uh, gluten and uh, the BPF filter. Okay, um, so now I'm going to start Satan, uh, need root in order to be able to create a, a make node, um, the device nodes. So it takes as input again uh, the gluten that we generate uh, now. But in this case, we are not passing the pit, but a path to a socket. This was the uh, thing I mentioned into for uh, the OCI integration for uh, a second filter. So it's going to be okay. So now I will start again the same container, but I have added uh, two annotations. So I hope you can see it. Um, so the first in the first annotation, I am reading. Can you read it? Yeah, so in the first annotation, it's second BPF data. And basically, we are reading the BPF filter that we generate with Cooker. And the second annotation is the OCI, uh, the OCI um, support for, uh, for the uh, second notifier. And it takes uh, the, um, uh, the path of the socket where uh, the runtime will pass the file descriptor. Okay, and then we are basically as a command create again, the try to create the character device and try to list it. So we will see if it's successful. Okay, so you can see that now we have been able to create the character device because the call was actually performed by, by, um, by Satan. So in, the, in this case, we have been able to even create a character device without uh, make node capability inside the container. Okay, um, so, sorry. Um, so the takeaway of this presentation are that Satan is a tool for filtering and executing privileges code. We aim to reduce the capability and the privilege given to containers. Important is the declarative approach versus the imperative way. And you can find more uh, information into our website. Um, future plan are, of course, finish to uh, code and a big cleanup. It's really needed. And um, yeah, right now we have very few Cisco's, but we plan to add more. Uh, we would like, uh, we would love to have feedback from you because it's a very new idea. So uh, if you have any concern, please speak up. And uh, yeah, our goal is to try to integrate Satan with container engines and virtualization engines such as Kubert. And uh, special thanks to Andrea Arcangeli, Christian Browner, the his blog was, has been very helpful, and uh, Kubert developers that help us to shape uh, the design. So, any questions? Oops. Could you hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I haven't realized it. Uh, any questions? So we, we have one question from the market group. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the first demo. So uh, the question is if it's possible to do MK node with outside of a container. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, the first, uh, um, CIS I mean, the first example was uh, without a container, and you could do the exactly the same. So yeah, the so does the BPF program need to be loaded. <laughs> yeah, I mean you have seen the two flavor of Satan. I mean the in the first uh, in the first example in the demo we have used Satan eater because it's exactly. Uh, I mean we need to launch uh, the process by installing previously the the filter. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thanks for your time. Communicate the market. 